Bag fuel, baby. Bag fuel, we back. I got my man Han with me. We oh, got dude. legendary producer. Man, one of the hit men. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Word one of up. the hit men that did countless hits across the globe. <laughs> my man Derek D. Dot Angeletti. We here, baby. We yeah. up here. What's good? I'm blessed. How are you? Man, we good, man. We just glad to have, ha have you here amongst us, man. Pleasure to be here, man. You know, we've been talking about this for a minute, too. So yeah, it was yeah. time, you know what I'm saying? Had to bless my man. Yeah, appreciate bless it. Bless my man Heineken. Yeah, All right, I'm let's sure. do it. Listen, yeah. you, you've shaped a, a, a generation, man. Yeah. Like, what you did in the 90s, like, does does hip-hop even trans, transcends to that level with what you was doing with Puff and Bad Boy and Biggie and everything else? Let's just keep it a beam. I appreciate that. You know, it's crazy doing these interviews, you don't... Yeah. Hearing it from different perspectives, you just... It, it's a blessing, but it's also like still like surprising. Like, yeah, with all the, you know, with all the characters and all the things that happened, people still feel like you made an impact, and that's really what the goal was. You know what I'm saying? So I appreciate that. For mm -hmm. real. How 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 do you compare or feel about the sampling that's going on now compared to when y'all were sampling? When you say compare, like when because they were criticizing sampling back then too, mm -hmm. like you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. But now they're criticizing sampling more. Do you think? Yeah. That, yeah. Do Do you think that they're putting less work into it? Do you think that the sampling that they that they're chopping or whatever is good, or you think it's trash? I I I I've heard just like in our generation, I've heard some good, mm -hmm. and I've heard some bad. Mm -hmm. I don't think anything this generation is doing is for me, and I just isolate it. There's Nothing wrong with what they're doing because this is their moment. Now, we as an adults can pick apart certain things that we might not agree with, mm. but that's the same thing that happened to us. That's the same thing that happened yep. to the people before us. That is just, we have to sit back and allow them to have their moment. That doesn't mean I have to listen to it. I got daughters that listen to all of this from rock to hip hop. And some of it is like, whew, it's, it seems like it's worse than ours, but it's really not. Um, I think the sampling is go for yours, especially if you sample the stuff that we did from our generation, because that helps us make money that we might not have normally made 20 years mm. from now. So if there's a rapper from the 90s like that, that who had good records, like let's use a Mike Geronimo, for example, mm -hmm. he might, somebody might come and take Mike Geronimo, Mike, a Mike Geronimo record, sample it, make it a smash hit, and next thing you know, he's working now more as a result maybe they put them on the record mm -hmm. to rap on it like they do some of these other dudes like to me it's it's like a roll of the dice just like in our generation i heard dudes that sampled and you'd heard the record and it was like y'all should have never did that that's you you know what i'm saying <laughs> yeah 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 the style of producing and making beats where does that come from where do you have music theory knowledge or it's just by ear <clears throat> it's all by ear growing up there are lessons that are taught that are not necessarily teach a student under the guideline, under the guise. So I grew up with DJ Clark Kent. Um, he was my first DJ in Brooklyn. So watching him and his hustle early in our careers at 20, 19, 18, how he's moving around the city, um, listening to Jerry around my way. Or, Who's Jerry? Who's Jerry? Um, Jerry was like a producer okay, DJ okay, around okay. the way, just a Brooklyn dude. Okay. Um, then moving on to college and meeting Ron Lawrence and then watching him do the beats. He's my mentor. Um, so my style came from, I love Barry White. That's like my idol. James mm. Brown, Roy Ayers. Um, those are the people that music move me. Like, so my bop, I'm always in that space for my bop. How can I get you to move whether it's 82, beats, 82 BPMs or 120? How could I get you to do something that they making me do when I was 19 and 20 mm. putting on the record? So yeah. And then the, the producers inspire me, the Primos, the Pete Rocks, the Teddy Rileys, the Dr. Dre's, the Puffs, the, the new guys, the Rottweilers, the, the hit makers. <clears throat> If they got a bop and they got a sound and like Large Professor and Buckwild, if they got a bop and a sound, it would be in your best interest to study it and learn it because look what the fans are, re look how the fans are reacting. Mm. So I'm, I feel like I'm a melting pot of all of these dudes. Nothing is original. There's going to be some jacks here like, oh, you heard how he did his, let me, let me try that and then put my twist on it. You know what I'm saying? So 
everything inspired me for my for my beats. Yeah, because a lot of people was inspired by your interludes, man. They they don't, <laughs> let's keep it real, man. <laughs> That's it, because when we were, dope. yeah, that's dope. like, that's so, the mad rapper. The mad rapper, because <laughs> after that, everyone had skits. Yeah. Everyone had, like, those types of interludes. Yeah, and you know what's crazy? There were skits before us, like, okay. you, know, you know that, that De La Soul yeah, and Dre, 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 Dre and them, had skits. right? Yes. Then there was a moment in time where it was, like, quiet, so I think the mad rapper was, like, a resurgence. The resurgence. Yeah, it was, like, gotcha. a resurgence, but, yeah, I was inspired by all of them, yeah, and the skits were, I did more than mad rapper skits, but... The mm. skits helped us make our movies, because we made all our albums were based on movies. So, but you, being the, man, but you being the mad rapper was fucking crazy, especially with like just just knowing you, <laughs> and, and, and hearing you go crazy. This shit, this, shit, this shit was wild. But yo, I, I'm a Morgan State guy, right? I'm a, I'm, I'm a Morgan State graduate, HBCU. You heard, yeah, 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 yeah. right? We don't stick together like y'all HU people. What's in the water with HU that makes all that makes the camaraderie so tight amongst all the graduates or even people that just went there? First of all, that's a great question. Sorry for you for Morgan State. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> I love Morgan State. Damn for life, bro. <laughs> um, nah, but <clears throat> Howard University changed all our lives. It's it's the diversity of people. It's the the idea of it, meaning it's the idea of people that look like us, all hues of us, mm. to come together to change the world. That was already there since the early 100, 1900s. Gotcha. So when you come there, there's already like a, a responsibility you have already that you're bur you have a burden you're carrying to carry this torch. Now when you get there, if you happen to have gotten there when I got there in 1986, you had the benefit of a couple of people from 1985 and 1984, and then I had the benefit of meeting these new people that would come in 87, 88, and 89, and that combination of five years, something was in the water that made us mm. fuck with each other in various ways, you know, whether it was throwing parties or making clothes like Chris Latimer did or becoming the mayor of cities like Kasim Reed and Raz Baraka, or what Puff and I and Ron and and, and Diggable Planets and Michelle and Dege and Cello and Tracy and Lee. Tracy Lee and Mark Batson and 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 wasn't Mark Pitts there too? Mark Pitts becoming the manager, Harv Pierre becoming the president of. Uh, and, uh, Harv was at Howard too. Harv Pierre, of course, Harv Pierre was at Howard. I know HP was at Howard. Harv Pierre, Mark Pitts, um, Anthony Anderson. Anthony Anderson. They were all there mm. when we were there. Um, 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 uh, uh, man, it was so many people and we actually genuinely fucked with each other. Mm -hmm. Like it was, it was like, yeah, you know, everybody had this shit, but not knowing what the future would hold, we just stayed in contact. Different mm -hmm. people started doing different things. Chris Latimer started the African American College Alliance Special. Remember, remember, so remember that. in the 90s? Everybody had that. Everybody it, was on, had that. it was on the TV show. Yeah, we had it at Two Kings and Cypher. So here he goes doing that. Um, but before that, he was an A&R. Puff is doing um, a, 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 a internship with Uptown Records, who has Heavy D and this and that. Ron Lawrence came to Howard, already had a record out with Kid and Play and Herbie Lovebug mm -hmm. and that crew with Clark Kent and them. So Ron came on campus with already, boom. Uh -huh. And I'm coming thinking I'm the hottest nigga since Fish Grease. Hear me. Mm. So Ron heard me. Puff went this, it was just that, that Howard connected. We got doctors and lawyers and government people. You know, Kamala Harris went to Howard University, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man, it was just something there. And I think it's just the responsibility of what Howard did, what the people before us did. We want to change the world. We want to impact our people. And you come there with that, whether you're from where I'm from, from Brooklyn, or you're from Compton. We met people from Chicago, Detroit. We have Africa. Everywhere, yo, and and you learning their cultures and accepting it, and they learning mm. yours. You know what I'm saying? DC was go go, but quietly, all our hip hop had go go in it. Rock the bells is a go go record. Um, Salt and Pepper go go records. Yeah. Shake Your Thing was the Shake Not Your Shake thing? Your Thing was before that. Um, was there? I'll Take Your Man is a I'll go go record. All that has them go go. So we don't even realize that we're mixing cultures right at that. So go go was. Super hot when I got there. Junkyard and all these. So Red Essence. Red Essence. Backyard. Yeah, man. Backyard and, Ch and Chuck Brown. Chuck Brown. Chucky Thompson played under Chuck Brown mm -hmm. as a drummer. So, yeah. 
and we met Chucky e. Thompson there. So, dog, it was, it was, yeah, Howard, Howard is just a special place, man. I read, my daughter graduated from there. Congratulations. My wife graduated from there, you know what I'm saying? So, it was a special place. That was a good question, man. Do you think Bad Boy would be what it is if y'all all didn't go to Howard? Absolutely not. Puff gave his speech. <clears throat> his life changed in Howard's library. My life changed the minute they kicked me out and told me that I can come back. Wow. That changed my life because they saw something in me that I was fucking up. You hear fucking up? Mm. We're going to give you one more chance, nigga. Because you're going to be somebody. Imagine whoever didn't do that let me back in. I wouldn't have met Hoff Pierre, Mark Pitts, Ron Lawrence, Puffy, and all the people. Your whole crew was in there. Your whole crew was in there. You was a rapper first. What was yeah. the transition to you producing and how did you feel when you had to put the mic the mic down and move on to producing? I, first of all, my stomach was hurt when they dropped us from my label because I felt like I was nice mm -hmm. and I wanted to be heard. So yeah, I, was I went and lived in my mother's basement for two years. Mm. While I'm working for Mary J. Blige, road managing, I'm in still in my mother's basement until I got a check. I wasn't living in no condo or nothing. I'm road manager, Mary J. Blige, 45 people. I'm traveling around the world. When I come back, I'm going to Queens. Farmers Boulevard to the basement. Till I built up my check, then I moved. But I felt like I got to do something. So I bought a drum machine. Ron Lawrence was sending me beats from LA because he moved to LA to work with Shy. Shy almost went to Howard. I thought the they went to Howard. They did. Shy went to Howard, right? So yeah. Shy was there and we were there. They made that record. So Ron went out there with them to work on their second album. So he's sending me dats. <clears throat> And I'm, you know, and I'm trying to scramble his beats and I'm also trying to write, but you know, I'm in New York and he's in LA, so he's getting, his sound is switching right. a little bit, not different, but he's adapting to what's out there and he's doing that. I'm in New York in 90, this is 94, 95. You know what's happening here, it's Fat Joe, it's Wu-Tang, it's Big, it's Nas. The sound is becoming, you know, large professor them and making them type of groove, so. Mm -hmm. so <clears throat> I'm trying to get that and you know, so I'm, I said, let me try to make my own. So I bought a little MPC 62. So on the off days, when I got back home, I'd sit in there. I had crates of records already, and I would just try shit mm. until I got it. Ron had already taught me in DC when we were working on Two Kings and Cypher, little tricks. So I was already a step ahead. I knew how to at least loop something up. I knew how to take off the time and correct. Okay. It's just I didn't have the swag with all the drums and how to make them. You know, I had to learn all of that. Uh -huh. But at least I knew how to get something in there, loop it up, get my. Mm. <laughs> I knew how to get that going. You know what I'm saying? If I could get that going, now and it was only to get the rhymes going. It got wasn't it. to sell. Yeah, guys. Mm. It was just so I can because I had something for you to get. Yeah, because I'm getting I'm getting ready to get shit not working for you too. Well, good. for not for me, but it, yeah. it worked for the world. Yeah, but for what the world, but I, I want to write to that other shit that they write into. Okay. So mm. that's really what it was for until I let people hear what I was writing to. And niggas like, let me get that beat. Yeah. And the first time that happened. Was when? Uh, 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 what's up, star? I like to get to know who, who you are. are. Let's what? have drinks at the that bar. That was the first one? Yes. Me and Ron. Uh -huh. So I was like, wow. So did you send it to Ron to clean it up? Yes. I got you. Yes. I got you. Because I'm nasty yeah, with it. My shit was, they know my, you my, like Ron my stairs didn't have the, I had clips, so it was going to go. I didn't know how to clean up all that. Clean that up. nigga is the scientist. The mm. shit sound like they came out of package when he finishes with them. Like you bought them for eight ninety nine. Mm. So yeah, like if I can just get this looped up the way the 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 way I need it with in that situation, it came back like. Mm. Boom! <laughs> I'm like, oh, you was yes. like, that's my shit. Yeah, right there we go, Ron. We're off. We're off, Ron. We're off, and then. Gave it to Jimmy, Jam Master J, Sugar came in, Sweet Tea, shout out to my girl. Boom. So, you wasn't with Bad Boy then? Mm mm. This is nice. I'm still in my mother's basement. So, how did you and Ron become the hip hitman or, or part of it? Well, I, I, I got that one off. Then, my big brother, Kedar Massenburg, God bless him, he was working on Rakim's album when Rakim was signed to Universal. Mm. So, I went and played him two tracks that Ron had did that sent me. He bought them for us for nine grand, 45 a piece. So me and Ron, <laughs> <laughs> I'm in my mother's basement. Boy, that shit sounded like 45,000. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I said, so you get you get forty five hundred up front, and then you, we get the forty five when we finish. So me and Ron get to split the twenty two five. So I said, Ron is twenty two five. I kept mine. That nigga was on a plane back to his brother's house in Mount Vernon. His brother, his brother, you know, had a nice house in Mount Vernon, and I went and I got me a spot in Brooklyn. That's all I needed was a come up because Mary's money is still coming in. I got you. So but you just I need, need a little I need lump. A little lump. Back then. Yeah, I need one lump, 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 lump that can just go and say, here go your two months up front. Yeah, Mary will be in the two weeks and now my shit is flowing. And that's all I needed. Now I'm in Brooklyn. I'm out mom's basement. Ron is back in. in um, I'm not in Brooklyn right away. Ron comes back. I'm still downstairs. We do. While I'm still in my mother's basement, then the next thing after Tokidaw's records, our two records never come out. But he, but, the, but he paid us. He paid y'all. That's, so that's God, the old music that, business. That, that's yeah. the, well, he, his intention was for him to come yeah, out. Yeah. Well, yeah. We just never got to the records. So God bless my big brother Kedar from Brooklyn because that helped me get on my feet, that check. And then the next thing, while Ron is in Mount Vernon, and so opportunity is coming now because I'm coming back and forth and I happen to be in the studio. And Latrice Shaw, who worked for Bad Boy, um, we still not Hitman yet, but I'm up and down in the walls and I'm checking on shit because I'm there, I can go around. She gives us the acapella to, I rock the party that rocks the body. You rock the, the party, party that, that rocks. They needed a remix. So I run. <laughs> run! I, I drive up the mountain. We're we're right, right, right. Right. We're working on party. this right now. Right, right now. It's he, another check. It's Ron. another check, Ron. And <laughs> go, 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 go. He does scientific. I don't want to mythical. He does all his shit. We go in there. And next thing you know, they love it. Then Steve, then Puff brings Stevie in to add all the extra, you know, Stevie, the, J. Stevie, Stevie J. J. Right. Who, me? No, that wasn't my first time with Stevie, but that was the first time we collabed. Yeah. That was our first collaboration. Gotcha. And we're still not hitmen yet. None of us are hitmen yet. Hitman ain't even started yet. And so now this me and Ron are off now. So this is how we went from You went from rapping. Rapping, being, being broke to being a producer. Those opportunities. How did you get the Mary gig? The road managed Mary. Where'd that come from? Oh, um, man, so so I'm around, because I'm living in my mom's basement. Harv is in Queens. Mark is up there. Nasheen Myrick lives in Queens, so he's working with Chucky. And they all going up to Scarsdale, fucking with Puff, and they working on these albums, so they at the Hit Factory and all them studios, Sony. Mm. You know, they working, so I got a regular J-O-B, because I'm living in mom's basement. So after work, 6, 7 o'clock, I jump on the Trizane go and go with fuck them. with them. So I <clears throat> um, started getting opportunities, and I got a little opportunity to make Puff some money with some T-shirts, so I did that. And then once he saw that, um, he saw me around with Harv, and whenever they was around, I just came off of TV. I'm, I'm on video music box, nigga. I'm traveling around the country with Tribe Core Quest and leaders of the new school. That's how I know all these niggas. Eric Sh I know all these dudes from Two Kings. Two Kings in the Cypher. Right. Mm. So, but now I'm, I'm not that. But I, I know these people. You got so the now, right. So now when I'm in the mix, Clark knows me. People know, yo, Derek, what's so what you doing now? I'm trying to find my way. But I'll hold up a sign for you, son, if I'm here. You got no problem with that? Mm -hmm. Bad boy. You know, I ain't got no ego. I was selling books at a bookstore after being on TV. So I'm one of them dudes. Let's go. So he saw me helping out, saw me doing things. And then when I made him that money from the t-shirts because they were in Harlem giving them away. And I saw the, 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 the pandemonium that was happening for a free bad boy t-shirt in 93, 94. It was like he was giving away crack. Oh. It was like he was giving away free or... You know, it was like reparations for us. Like mm. somebody had reparation checks. That's how it looked. Like, what the fuck? So I convinced people at Bad Boy to let me make some at a cheaper rate that they were making them. And I sold them instead of giving them away. Fuck <laughs> like that. He loved it. <laughs> <laughs> because, not only, because not only did you make some money. Made it cheaper. You made it cheaper, but you know what else you did? You showed him his name meant something. something right. Yeah. It was a value. It was a now. value. And so, they're willing to pay for it. They're willing to buy it. And, and, and then also how I flipped it was back then interns didn't get paid. So I got a regular job. So how do we sell these t-shirts? I can't sell them. 
So I went to all the interns that weren't getting paid, but up there every day, all day, carrying T-shirts, getting on the train, the handing out the flyer. Crack. Take this crack. Take yo. these T-shirts. And I'm going to bust y'all down. We're going to sell them for $25, $30. Y'all get $10 off of every T-shirt you'll sell, and I made two, three, five hundred of them, whatever I made. So if you sell 50 of them, how much is that for you? 500. Yes, and you're an intern. Them That's... niggas came back with their bags empty, every single one of them. Mm. So I went to a club one day after we tallied it all up, gave him back the expenses, whatever. Went to Puff and handed him cash in the club. What's this, son? From T-shirts. Five minutes later, open ball, P. Diddy. You know, he throw, probably threw the money in there. It's something stupid. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know how he used to do. Something happened. He just, he just make you see like he just something, something probably crazy. But you're right. It opened his eyes. Opened his so eyes. one day... One again, again, I don't work there. I'm coming to check off, and it's late. It's real late at night, and him and Groovy Lou come to the studio. I mean, to the office, and it's late. But we hear a knock at the door. We think, oh, shit, Puff put the weed away, but you can smell it all through the office. So he comes in, he just points right at me, says, yo, let me talk to you. I don't work for him, so I'm bugging. Like, what's happening here? What are you talking about? Like, why you ain't talk hard? <laughs> I go in the room, Groovy Lou, I think it was Groovy Lou, um, sitting in there, and he just sits across from the table for me. He says, yo, I've been watching you. What you doing? And he just looks me dead in the face and says, you want to marry, manage Mary J. Blige with me? Just looks me dead in my face. Mm. I'm sitting across from him like he's sitting there. I'm sitting right like, and I look at, I'm going back in the smoke, nigga. Stop. Come on. I never managed nobody before, man. I'm fresh out of the bookstore, nigga. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, he's like, nah, you can do it. Let's do it. So I took a day. So let me get back to you on that. I had to think about it. I got to speak to Mary because by now I'm up around, so I know Mary now. You know, are you gonna be comfortable with me? You you, you yeah, asked this straight I have to up. Be a, yeah, I went to her and her sister, cause her, her sister, you know, they they at that time it was like you know. So and they was like, we cool. Let's let's try it out, and we did, and it lasted two years. What yeah, so that's how we that's how we. What got. did Mary J. Blige's sister mean to her? Because it seemed like she everybody talks about her as like this backbone. Cause Kurt Woolley mentioned her. Kurt Woolley mm. sat with us. Yeah. But she's like an unsung hero. Like what, what was her role in everything? I mean, from birth, that's her big sister. And I'm sure they've been through wars that none of us know about, been through life things that none of us could speak on. And that bonds you forever, good and bad. I watched them argue on the road, but I watched the argument. It was as heated as it was, it was all based in love. So what would any big sister mean to a little sister if y'all been bonded since day one? You know what I'm saying? So I don't think people should be surprised. I think you would be surprised if it wasn't like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? For us, that's how we would hope it would be. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's exactly what it was. She got big sis who's going to ride or die for her and big sis married with kids, taking care of her own family. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And still there for baby sis. And that's how you would hope it would be. I, I don't have no brothers or sisters, so if mm. I did, that's, that's the I need room. that. Yeah, I need Latanya Blige. You know what I'm saying? That's for me, I'm just saying. You know what I mean? Yo, the, the thing we have an appetite for is for more Biggie music. Do you have any unreleased joint stash? Because when Fat Joe was like, I got a, a song with Biggie, we like, put it out, nigga. I thought he said he had a, a project with Biggie. Didn't he say something, something like, like that? that? I don't have any. I got an interlude with a couple of things Biggie said. But you, we might have pieces of verses like where, he, like let's say he did a verse, because it's very rare, but you know, when he was writing for JM or Kim or whoever, who may have been writing for somebody else, he might have wrote, you know, 20 or 16 or 50 mm. or whatever. You talking about he might have did reference tracks? Yeah, he might have did reference bars, tracks. Okay. Bars, bars, Repl and uh, yeah. bars. And then, you know, we used 12 out of the 16. So there might be four left of a. So we mm -hmm. use that for a hook or something. But B.I.G. was a custom fitted rapper. The beat had to come on first. Mm -hmm. That's it. There was no book of rhymes that he just fit a rhyme to it. Mm. Got you. It wasn't that. Oh. It was the beat has to come on and then he has to, it has to like, you know, like any most rappers it has to get absorbed in you for you to get the best out, out of them. Mm -hmm. So that's why there's no spare verses around. There's no extra. Mm -hmm. Now, what there might be is spare songs that he might have did with other people that we just don't have. Mm -hmm. Like of him, if they was, if they was, let's say, in Atlanta, and nigga might have gave big ten grand on the street, say, "Yo, come rock this." Yo, know, they with him and D Rock or Gutter, whoever sees went to the studio. He might have laid down the verse, and them niggas might have that. 
Got you. You know what I'm saying? That type of shit. But we don't. I I, I don't have any. Trust me, I'd have used four of them already or sold four of them or something. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or gave them to Miss Wallace to use or something, you know, but I don't, I don't have it. You got the Black Rob shit. I was just about yeah, to ask him. Yeah, let's get to my get to about about <laughs> if, you, if you got something to ask him, go ahead. Nah, 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 yeah, no, I was about to ask him. First, before we got to the new Black Rob project, yes. what's your connection with Black Rob? Because it seems like you're the only one trying to keep it. I'm not gonna take it from nobody else because I don't see you. <laughs> but I see D Dot yeah, yeah. keeping his name alive. Yes. And the fact that you dedicated a whole new project to it. What double, is the double connection? Album, double album. What's yeah. the connection to with you and Rob? Um, fate. Mm -hmm. Um, fate. Fate. Um, I met Rob as a result of the Howard thing with Mark Pitts managing a group called Crew that Yogi was I in. Remember crew. Mm -hmm. Okay. I managed Tracy Lee and Mark Pitt signed Tracy Lee. And so he put them together to make a record, Tracy Lee and crew. Okay. And um, so Rob and Yogi are from the same hood. So when I went to the session with Trey Lee, I met crew and some guy named Bacardi Rob. Mm -hmm. And we instantly clicked. He was my age. He was from the hood. He liked the type of music I like. We liked the same bars. We liked the same albums. And I said, wow, this is way before Bad Boy. It's just I know him through crew. Fast forward, he signed to Bad Boy. I had nothing to do with that. Oh, shit. I love him. But he wasn't ready for prime time. He was still in and out of the, the jails. His mm. crew was... Is, Street niggas. Yeah, you know, and they they not they they smart, but they not ready for this yet. They don't understand what this is. So Puff kind of put Rob on the back burner because we we had the other crew that stepped up and they were ready for prime time. Mace, L O X. They were, you know, they were ready 112. for 112. So Rob got pushed to the back a little bit. So when we when we got our opportunity to do Rob, I wanted to be a part of that because that's my stamp. If we fast forward to today and with all these niggas doing producer rappers, that would have been a D dot thing if he was here. You know what I'm saying? Because we, our connection, our vibe, everything was the same. So that's how I connected with Rob and I stayed connected with him, even through the bad. Me and Rob and fought and I spoke, spoke for years or months. We haven't been through all that, but it was, again, brotherly love. Were you there when, before Woe hit the world? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was in the studio with him. Buck Wild mm -hmm. did the beat. Half PA on the chorus with Rob. Yes, sir. I executive produced that album. That was that was our actually Buck Wild and and Harv saved us and Rob with the song because that was Rob's third single. We had already put out two and it didn't have the results that we we wanted. Mm. So Puff was like, "Yo, I'm gonna give y'all niggas one more shot." And you know how that record got approved? I may not have the story all the way correct, but Puff threw a listening party somewhere near their office <clears throat> for this record. And invited people because for whoa, for whoa, because he didn't want to spend the money, money we were spending on videos again, marketing, promotion. We got to do all, you know, back then you got print up records, you got to do all that shit. It's mm -hmm. a lot to do. And he was like, fuck that, I don't care what y'all say. And then the reaction, I think, in that club for that private moment to, for the people who never heard it to hear it mm -hmm. and it spun back eight, nine, ten times, I think that's when he knew, okay, y'all niggas did it. So shout out to Buck and Harv and Rob for. That record just, just saved us for, to, to, you know what I'm saying, for Rob's project, for me to get to this new one, Life Story 2. How do you make money off of this new project with Rob? Actually, that was at the bottom of our list. Mm. Um, making money. This was a passion project for me, his manager, Jamal, and his crew, um, because Rob didn't get the fanfare that a lot of other rappers got in their untimely demise. Mm -hmm. um, so, and I had all this music from the years of, Rob was a prolific writer. Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> Rob had books of rhymes, because he was a jail dude. So Rob can sit and write to any beat and then take the rhyme and put it somewhere else. Mm -hmm. He just liked to write. So Rob had books of rhymes. So we have records upon records of Rob, because Rob will spit over whatever if, it, if he felt the vibe. And then we may have that same verse on another record because he didn't use it over there, but he, he got it, it out. He re-spit it, re it over here. over yeah. here. So that was a collection of those, along with the records that him and I did, which was about 20 to 30 that we never put out. So I took all of those and said, 
if I had to do an album with Rob if he was alive, what's the closest I can get? And so that's what Life Story yeah. 2 is. Because, you know, his verse, when it was him, G. Depp, and Puff, yeah. when the Harlem Shake was going crazy, I yeah. just remember that was a moment, man. Yeah, he, he, was, he was a special guy. You know, all of them were special. But yeah. So when I did Life Story 2, I just said, let me try to bring, that, bring back that vibe so people know mm. how ill he was. So I grabbed Nasheem, Carlos Rodi, Ron Lawrence, mm -hmm. Buck Wild from the first albums, called on Faith, Faith. And Stevie did a song for me. I wanted to do a record, uh, like a, I'm a concept dude. So I did a record called Riot in Heaven. And Riot in Heaven, if it's not the first, it's one of the first records with all dead rappers on it. It wow. featured Rob, uh, uh, Sean Price, Fred the Godson, DMX, Tupac, Biggie, and K Slay at the end. I put that out in 2022, just for the streets, for Rob. And it was called Riot in Heaven, book one. And I was trying to get Prodigy on it. So it got a little attention. And then I decided I'm a, I'm a concept guy. So what else could I do for Black? So I was trying to think what other rappers' name is Black. So Black Thought. Didn't know if they knew each other or not. Reached out to him. Sean C had a, had a song that the verse didn't get used. So I so said, Black Thought on that. Could I use it? I switched up a couple of things because he didn't, it didn't flow the way. Took a, then one day, so I took that, got that verse, fixed up the words. So when he says PR, PR, I went in and said BR. So he could, you know, mm. so that's mm. the real behind the story. I don't want people to think Black Thought went in and spit a verse. That's, that's not the real. Um, but what is the real is Black Thought during last year went on Funkmaster Flex and spit a 10 minute freestyle. Mm -hmm. I went and downloaded the acapella and took some lines from the freestyle, and that's how I made the hook to the Black Thought record, mm. and used that to make the hook. So that's why I said, black, no matter what. And he goes, go bananas, outstanding, red, black, and green, bandanas, bandanas, no matter what. Then I took another line, Black Thought, he said, and I took all that from the Funk Master Flex freestyle. So this project was me trying to say, without him here, what's the best you could do to get this shit done, Doc? Mm. And do your magic, do your DDoS shit so nobody can come back in and say, well, it was because of this nigga and because of that nigga. Mm -mm. This is my work and my crew's work, Riz Deluxe, Nasheem, I said, I got LNX music. Sean C and LV came in to help out. Um, Kid Capri, Yogi, so many people came to help us out. So I'm thankful for all of them that came and helped out with Life Story 2. In stores right now, by the way, Life Story 2, out now on all streams, Black Rob, double album. So I appreciate that. Of <laughs> Need that that's promo, baby. Uh, Need that beautiful. promo, of course, baby. Of course. Yeah, I got the whole crew together though, and Buck Wild came through. Nosh, you know, everybody was. It was never no issue. It was like, well, what more can we do? You know, I wish I'd have had more of the crew on there, but we'll save that. I still got sixteen in the clip. Mm. So his birthday is June eighth. So we thinking we probably do if if we do, we probably will though. You know, till death do us part would be the last in the in the series. And just drop that somewhere around his birthday and just, you know. Merge it all together. Merge it all together and just, you know, send our love to my man and say, this is what I want to donate to the cause, bro. If it may not do nothing now, but who knows 20 years from now, you know, when if we're not using MP3s, we might be using DK5s and it gets transferred and 10 million of them sell because you got to transfer those. We never know in this well, you time can. of day. So, just right. don't. So, Any plans I, to do like a skit on that one? I didn't do no skit on it. I didn't do no skits. I rapped on it as a mad rapper, but I didn't want to do it was hard to it was hard to be funny because he's not here. Gotcha. So I used him to be funny. The skits that are on there is him being funny. Like let him be funny because you it's know, a, yeah, it's, it's a tribute to him. So he's all over that shit. That's what it was, yeah. Has anybody come to you and wanted to do wanted to feature the mad rapper? Like a, a, a major dude, like a Drake or somebody like that. Has anybody approached you about that yet? Actually, to keep it real, this last album Drake Drake dropped the the executive producer. Um, what's what's the brother's name? Who? Who? Who do you say? <laughs> he being funny. He oh, okay. Funny. No, who's who's the executive producer for Drake? Um, I don't know. not forty. 40. Uh, the manager. Um, I don't know their names. Um, um one of, they approached me. To do a skit, and I did it. I sent it to him. They didn't but use it. They didn't use it. Drake wanted something more specific to the project. I hated on him because I I don't I didn't know what the project was. So I couldn't really hate on it. So 
And I asked them, okay, well, I can try another one if you tell me what it was, but they didn't. Do you remember what you said? Yeah, I talked about his hair. I talked about the clothes he wears and, you know, how his name being Drake. Hot Rod of Rob? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was... that was. It, it was his record. No, it wasn't. It wasn't your mm -hmm. record, Hot Rod of Rob? We made it my record later, but that was a crazy story. But um, 50 was signed to uh, Trackmasters and them, I'm, I'm, but I'm at Columbia, and... I'm sitting in the studio one night, one, two o'clock in the morning, it's pouring down rain, and Rich Nice, the A and R for I know Rich Nice. Right. He called me up in the middle of the night and said, Dot, we have a record that we need a hook for. I said, Yo, I'm about to go home, fam. Like, what the fuck, man? It's raining outside. I'm about to go home. He said, please, you know, please. And he shot to Jimmy's studio, played me the original record. Because it got changed a little bit, because you know he had Mariah and Tommy in there before he switched. I ain't know he had oh, yeah, Mariah. Yeah, yeah, before, before it was Mary and Case, it was Mariah and Tommy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 you talking, talking about the words? Verse, I'm about the words. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm a Ryan Tommy. So, yeah, my bad. So, I hear the record and I'm like, yo, this is mad rapper style all day. Like, I loved it. I was like, oh, what niggas are gonna be so mad? Yeah, I've been there like, yes. What could I do? Oh, this ain't serious. So, I laid the chorus <laughs> right there, nigga. <laughs> Being broken and make you delirious. Stop it, there. <laughs> Yo. I'm in there like, yes, I'm gonna be all over this shit. Yeah, yeah, man, rap, rap, rap. I'm at the end, the beginning. Can I, can I add live with the nigga? I was asking, what could I do? And that's what I did. And I yeah, didn't yeah. even meet the nigga. I ain't met him yet. You I ain't never met 50? No, I'm saying at that time. At that time, I didn't know, you know, I ain't yeah. meet him. So uh -huh. I did the chorus. A couple of days later, they, ah, oh, it's crazy. We putting it out. Bah, 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 bah. And, but they put it out on a soundtrack. We never shot a video to it. Mm -hmm. I mean, not to say he wouldn't have been who he was, but it would help me out a lot. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I, I, yep, so that was me. When, I was just when like, he said that, was that because he knew you was affiliated or he just. Nah, that was all there before I got there. Yeah, he said that. He didn't even know that. He, yeah, he, he rolled down he the record. Yeah, uh, yeah. Interesting. That was everything. Only thing he did was change words after I got there because there was a couple of things that he probably crossed politically that he had to fix up. But everything else, I loved it. And then the backlash was like, yes. They calling me, Dad, how could you do it? I'm like, I know, but did you like the record though? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> How'd you like it? Every time I turn the radio on, my voice is on the radio. Yeah, yeah, did you like it though? <laughs> who, was the, who was the biggest names that called you if you were? Oh yeah, uh, Pun, Missy, wow. uh, uh, Jay. Jay did it on the air. Jay called me on the air for the Angie Martinez niggas show. Niggas was mad, right? Yeah, yeah, Jay wasn't, not Jay, you know, Jay is a pro. No, I'm not saying Jay, but, oh, yeah, but, but yeah. niggas nah, Some niggas was mad, yeah, some yes. niggas. But then actually I got calls from people that said, why didn't you name us? Like mm. because they understood the the market, the, what it was. It was like, damn, I wish I was on that record. You know what I mean? So yeah, Jay Jay got on Angie Martinez, called me live from the air. I was like, yo, that's dope. And I'm like, oh word, you love it? He's like, yeah, yeah, cool. But you know, I got to spank your man though. <laughs> I was like, yeah. Then I, you know, I'm about a dollar. Who the fuck is it? You know, all that. Like, yeah, I was like, yes, I'm part of history, nigga. Keep it going. I was loving it. Yeah, I was loving it. So what does a hit producer do for money after they stop producing? Because I see your car, you stay fresh, you ain't broke. How the fuck you keep money in your pocket after you not producing all these hit records no more? Um, you know, couple of couple of you know just investments. But me and my boys, because all my boys are hustlers from Brooklyn. Shout out to all my family in Brooklyn. They know mm -hmm. we did a little collective, uh, what we call investment group. Gotcha. Um, my wife is a huge author, so I own a, a publishing company. She owns, we own, uh, Writer Girl Media. My wife is a romance author. That she writes under the name Lisa Lang Blakeney. And my wife world tours to wow. writing books. So we, you know, so I've been doing that for the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, so quietly, remember in the movie where the nigga's wife was writing the thing, he was a cop, or was yeah. it, um, mm -hmm. uh, what was that shit, remember? The, I know what you're talking about. The, the, the white man and the black man were cops, the old dudes and, and the, the black man's wife was writing books and they thought he was stealing money. So that's part of our business is I own, you know, real estate. People will tell you, you know, when since they known us in the nineties, the first thing I did when we got money is we, we started buying real estate. So we always had builders in, in Brooklyn and always had builders out of state in Orlando. You know, so real estate and just quiet though, not 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 smooth. Yeah, not 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 like I don't own like buildings with, you know, ninety joints in it. You're talking about you know, four apartments here. You know, six apartments here. My brother, Manageable my brother yeah, my brother Snoop had uh, apartments in in Jersey. My brother Guy in Brooklyn has a building on Fulton Street. We have a bar in there. You know, um, 
I have family in Orlando. So my father and I, before he passed, God bless him. So he did the my, my named his real estate company after my daughter. So we had four angels real estate in Florida. So my father bought up a couple of those uh, cribs for college kids on the campuses near Orlando. So he went up and did a couple of things. So we just used a little bit of cash we had. It wasn't millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars, but to keep it going further down the line, you know. So right now I'm in the you know book publishing business. I've always I, been I just in wrote a cookbook business. too. I, I, I yeah? got a cookbook. Wow, well, I didn't know that. Congratulations, man. I didn't even know you cooking all that. Yeah, Let's I, I might have to see in the book, see if you Yeah, but you should have some of that part of the show, man. Y'all want to publish man, this, this Maybe you, you know, cater some of the show, man. It's, we, it's dropping we, the game, We bro. sample some of your shit while we eating and all of that. <laughs> I mean, I love that. Because you, you work with Fifth mm -hmm. and you work with Puff. Like, what is the genesis of their rivalry since you know them both well? Like, do you? I actually, I actually don't know. Fifth actually oh. came. Huh? Oh, he you said, know? He said, you know? Oh, uh, right. yeah, I, I actually don't know. Um, it's like, my nigga. Like, I mean, I, I'm going to keep it real. And I know Fifth. Like, I, yeah, I'm going to keep it real. My relationship with Puff, I know people always like see me and equate me with Puff, but he might tell you, like, you don't see me around him a lot at all. Like, if it wasn't in the work environment, we never really hung out together Got much. You. We don't. I just, I got married in 1998. I was hotter than fish grease. That's just not the life I wanted to live. Mm. I was comfortable with doing my work, making sure y'all spelled Angeletti right, getting that check, Go home. and going Go home. home to your... Not to say I didn't do dirt and do dumb shit like everybody else. He, I was at the party, you know, I was traveling doing that. <laughs> but, but it wasn't in abundance. It wasn't in replace of. You enjoyed yourself yeah. at that moment. You know, I watched Buster Rhymes and I love Buster Rhymes and I, I watched an interview where he was so upset that he missed his son's high school graduation. Yeah, I saw that for the business. And I just made a conscious choice that I would never do that. I was at every, I only have daughters, so I was at every- I was at the volleyball Girl Scouts, games. volleyball, whatever they was doing, swimming lessons. Father, daughter dancing. Father, daughter mm -hmm. dances. I'm Cub Scouts, what's they call them, daisies. So I'm at all of that, unless I just couldn't be. So I just made a conscious choice. So I don't know, the 50 was around writing for Puff for a little while at yeah. the beginning. I don't, I don't know. They, they, they went to another bracket of money that I'm not in. So who knows what happened once you got on that side got of the you. wall? That's you fair. know what I'm saying? So that's just, I'm just keeping it 100. And you're you know? talking about two polarizing figures, bro. That, yeah. And like yeah, most yeah. of them, they all is they in like he said, they in a whole nother room arguing yeah. about stuff yeah, that we don't even. Have no they got a problem with stuff yeah. that, we, that we're not even privy to. And, and I, I we'll didn't get to that know. other comma yet. I'm still trying to get to that. That, that other comma is the, that's, that's that wall. That I, I haven't crossed that comma. How about you seeing Stevie on VH1? And all that? Oh, I loved it. That's my guy. Yo, nah, Stevie's Steve, a character. Stevie's a character. He should have his own shows for the tell, rest of his life. Let me tell you, because you know one of my, my cousins used to be one of the managers at um, Daddy's house, and he would always work with Stevie J. Stevie J would just be on some like, man, I fucks with you. Yo, Puff gave me this Rolex. I don't know. Take that shit. Like he was on some shit like that, and it, they would have all the Sean John. It's like, man, y'all niggas take that shit, bro. I don't need all that shit. I'm fucking bitches, yo. I, I could definitely say, yeah, Biggie, Stevie, myself, of course, didn't really shy away from just, you know, here. You know, if Stevie was around and it cost this much, just here, just get it. Let's not even talk about it. Got you. Puff was exactly the same way, but in Puff situation or Jay-Z's or most money, real money niggas, eventually they get tired of being the guy who flips the bill or do all of that. They just get tired of it. It's like, can't y'all niggas do something? So people like myself That's and Stevie and Nasheem and Biggie and different rappers, Mace, you, you would see us gesture more. Gotcha. Cause you know this guy's he can't pick up the bill for every fucking thing. Like God damn, mm. you want you know what I'm saying? So that's you know what I mean. So, uh, that's, yeah, yeah, that's that's how I look at it. Like you know, so we all donate to the cause. How you feel about girl code? What you think they can bring to the game? I love them girls. I I was on their last project for Def Jam. I love them little girls, man. I mean not little girls, but I love those girls. What I went you to think the studio. It's take to break them <laughs> through like they need to be broken through. And these days, I, I don't really don't know what it takes. I don't mm. think they should take their clothes off and start shaking their ass. I don't mm. think they should conform to, I, I don't know. To me, you know, I'm a different type of dude. Me, I'd have just kept them original, hard, without all that, you know. Uh, is there 
kind of happy. Like I'd have just left them street street Rugged. girls because they were young, mm. and the older girls. Like the reason why all the older women called me up and said they love them is because that's who they were. Ladylike, because both of them are girls, they're not boys. Girl code, those are girls. They just from Brooklyn. So there's gonna be that edge. Edge, that hard side of them. But so every woman that I know loves that because you need that edge to survive out here just as a woman. Mm. So if you're a rapper and doing it and you cute and y'all can spit, it's just the record making is just so universal now. I don't know music wise. What, 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 what to direction they, they do freestyles over the hardest old school shit. They got the, you know, the, the trap music. drill shit. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of time, man, because yeah. I, I, I heard, and I don't know if it's true, I heard they signed the quality control. Oh, new? Mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't know that. I, 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 Last I heard, I heard they were on 300. Yeah, me oh, too, but okay. I, I heard they signed maybe the quality control oh, management. Yeah. Or oh, yeah? Maybe, I don't know. Wow. I, I, I actually heard that like a few days ago, and I was like, wow. I, I didn't hear they signed the quality control. I thought that you might know. Nah, I, I, I actually, people thought I was more involved with them than they were mm -hmm. now. I saw somebody introduce me to them on the internet, like, you need to hear them, and I did hear them, mm -hmm. and I reached out to them. And they said, we know who you are, OG. Call our manager. And I said, who's your manager? AG. AG. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. So I reached out to AG. Shout out to AG. And he said, let's connect. And one day I arranged, and I drove from Philadelphia, and I drove up here and met them up at the DITC studios. And met them and vibe with them, and then went to see them at, the, at an event one time and just started vibe with them. We exchanged numbers. They came to Philly. We went out to dinner. So I really rock with them. I felt yeah, like that would be my brand. You old school producer, nigga. I got some money out here. Come get yeah, comfortable. Yeah, come get comfortable. We went out to dinner. So we can meet. Yeah, we can yeah. Talk well, I didn't bring them out there. They were out there doing something. Okay. They invited me, and I said I would love to come okay. down. And we went, and I went, and not only did I go to dinner with them, I went on their little promo run with them. Just yeah. played the back. Went to the clubs with them. Oh, watched them do their interviews, and I just played the back. Show them y'all my style. Y'all the shit that I want to put my brand to, if mm -hmm. we can. Like, and I, that's how I do. So that's gotcha. what I did. So I still fuck with them. I haven't worked with them in a minute, but they're going to be good. I love, the, I love Girl Crow. Shout out to Girl Crow. Yeah, Brooklyn Rock style. Rock. Definitely Brooklyn style. Or, so what's next for you, D-Dot? Um, we just, me and my wife getting ready to do these book runs. Um, so that's big. Um, me and Tracy Lee, God, God, shout out to Trey Lee. Um, you know, Trey Lee's still rapping. He's a lawyer, but we have a project, a little EP that we're probably going to drop in February called Law and Disorder. Mm. Um, little quick EP to just get the bars out, um, and then obviously Black Black Rob in June. But I've been talking with Smoke Dizza. Salute to Smoke. And he's on the album too. He's on Black Rob's life story okay. too. Smoke Dizza. Question: You said um, Black Rob got a whole book of rhymes. Would you try to like publish that as a book to come? Oh, out? I don't have them. Oh, you? Don't? I'm just saying in, in our history, he okay. would come to the studio with a book of rhymes and. Books of rhymes, but I don't have none of those. Uh, that's a good idea, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To publish the book of rhymes. Well, like sell that to his kids. Jamal, call his kids up, or y'all figure out, get no, the books. Call Heineken. Call Heineken. Yeah. 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 Heineken. Heineken link you back with yeah, you yeah. Yeah. So my yeah. man yeah. can get a piece I, of that. I, I don't need a piece. Just everybody. Just the family. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Appreciate you. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. I think people could read that and try to yeah, yeah. imagine what it would have sound like and hear yeah. his voice. Especially something that didn't get used. Because yeah. some of them, you might say, oh, should he use that one on here? Then, you know, yeah. I got one last question. Yeah, let's go. Would you want your kids to be in this music business? Mm. If they wanted to. I mean, one thing about my kids, they tell you, they didn't even see plaques till they was teenagers. Mm. I kept this shit so far away from them just simply because I wanted them to live as regular a life as possible with money. <laughs> I know that's hard to do, yeah. but I tried. But my daughter, my daughter Autumn is in the entertainment business. She's a director on Broadway. My daughter is, wow. she's doing her thing. So my daughter's oh. in the business. She's not in the music business. But my, it's Broadway. Yes, yeah, Broadway. Yeah. My youngest, all my children can sing. All of them can sing. Um, but they don't have the interest and the drive to be in front of the camera like that or mm. whatever. So. How do you feel about that? Are you glad about that? Is that relieving? A little no, bit. Knowing what the business is really about. A little bit, but some of it is ego for me too. You know, it'd been nice to have a- Just one. One, you know, one that just follows. <laughs> yeah. But you know, again, my daughters are so blessed. They so you, smart. They all, you know, so whatever they do, they got my 100,000 support. But you know, you know what, what they mean? say? I, I, I've seen this and happen. I've said this to Esso. When one of them have a kid, I don't know who, to, whatever, 
That's, that's when it the jumps. One. Okay. Yeah. So whatever yeah. grandchild <laughs> is gonna be the spitting version of you. Okay. And I, you're gonna I be like, like that too. Huh? Hey, I like that too. Yeah. But family, so, so yeah, you yeah. fuck with that. I, 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 didn't, I didn't force none of that on them, man. I want them to make their life mm. decisions. I want them to live as much of a normal life as possible with a ce celebrity father and a celebrity type mother because now in their older years, their mother is becoming very, very popular. So mm. I, I actually, it was funny, we were overseas a few months ago and um, so then, uh, no, I'm sorry, we were, we were in one of these cities for her book tour, it was here. And people are, you know, chiming over and she's signing autographs and signing the book and selling merch. And I'm standing there. And so one person comes up to me and says, and, and, and what do you do? <laughs> and I was like, perfect. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm Lisa I'm Angeletti's husband. husband. So, you know, so that's the life. Yes. That's perfect for that moment. I don't need to take the shine from her. I don't need to go. I'm just, and they had no clue who I was. And it, I didn't care. You know what I'm saying? And that was good. So it's just crazy. A, a guy whose whose name is attached to Grammys, multi platinum albums, and all of that. He like, I'm just her husband. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's there was the, people in Europe last year yep, that didn't know Jay-Z. Yeah. And Jay-Z was walking past and they was like, who is this? It went viral. They was like, who is this guy? When was he? Oh, you're talking about that Paris? In Europe, yeah. yeah. And they didn't know who Jay-Z was. He was walking by with the entourage and the people was like, who is this guy walking by an entourage and Jay-Z picture came in the journey? They was like, who is that guy? <laughs> wow. So, so that, which goes to show you how much misinformation we, we live on mm -hmm. and base our actions on. Mm. Misconceptions. Yeah. Just that alone, because I'm sitting there like... But they didn't know who Jay was. They just saw the entourage, and entourage was all white people and this one black guy. And I, I'm going to keep it even 100. Let's keep it down to this show. I asked on some 100. Not as niggas going to know me, but as niggas going to care. Mm -hmm. You understand the difference? Mm -hmm. Yes. So when I the last time when we talked earlier, a lot of it was because I wanted to talk about Black Rob Life Story 2, my wife's publishing company, all the things we're doing, the things that I have going on now. But I also was like, with all these motherfuckers telling stories, with all these podcasts, all this other shit, is my shit just in the long line of, I ain't watching that one, I ain't watching that one. I ain't. Like, what is it? So every mm. time I do it, I needed to be this, more relaxed, not programmed. <laughs> mm. I'm, I'm sorry, what you said, oh. you said. You know what I'm saying? The last ones I've done have been this. Mm. And that's the only way I wanted to do it. Gotcha. So it wasn't about the impact of y'all's show, it's the impact of me being a long line of shows, is it gonna matter? Mm -hmm. So I have to make sure my information and the way I move yes. maybe helps attract more attention because I am a unique individual. My book is called I Was There. Because when you talk to other people, there's gonna be a recollection of me somewhere there. There, yeah. I was, you know what your second book should be? Oh yeah, I'm still here. More, more books, more yes, ideas, yes. more ideas. I'm still, I'm, here. I'm, I'm still here. I'm still here. I was here, right? And then, I'm, but now yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm still, still here. Yeah, yeah, I'm still here. Yeah, but I like that. To, Damn, you're giving our ideas. You're giving our ideas left and right. Mm -hmm. But it, it, it's just it's it's a collection of stories, but it's a collection of hip hop history mm. simultaneously, and it's a collection of the life of Derek Angeletti by himself without the hitmen without Puff Daddy, without Biggie, without Kanye, without 50 Cent, without Ron Lawrence, without those people being the focus. And they are the, the, the paths that I came across that blessed me. Mm. And I wanna talk about being blessed by meeting Ron Lawrence and being taught. I wanna talk about coming across Sean Combs' path mm -hmm. or being attached to the notorious B.I.G. or meeting Pastor Mace. Role managing Role Mary. managing Mary J. Blige and meeting her family and, and getting signed and going to Howard University and meeting mayors and presidents, vice presidents and, and, and architects and doctors. 
everybody don't get the. I grew up in East Flatbush, Brooklyn. Mm. I, some of my niggas are still there. And some of my niggas that are not there don't mean they graduated to the level I have. So they have, they know Derek Michael Angeletti. Fuck a D dot. Fuck a mad rapper. But even before that, there was Clark Kent's. I got jacked by the fat boys in high school. That's what made me not want to rap anymore. Mm -hmm. At Tilden High School, I went to Tilden. They stole your raps? Me and Kenny Hodge. The record, not the raps, the record. Mm, wow. Uh, you know, uh, rapping in groups coming up. This is before I get to Howard, battling in that USA. I did battles in USA and Queens in high school. Those stories will never get told unless I tell it. So that's what this is. This is the, I'm on an award tour with Derek Angeletti, my man. Go for it. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate you sharing the story with us. Come man. on, man. This was real. I told you I was going to do it. You, you always been real with me. You know what I mean? And my man right here, pleasure to meet you. Keep your ideas or go get them trademarked to yourself sometimes, you know. I appreciate the love, though. <laughs> Don't give them all away. Them. Don't give them all away. Bad few. I hope you really enjoyed this because he told stuff that we would never know. You know what I'm saying? That sometimes you got to go peaks and valleys to go around and get yourself to your final destination. Most definitely. And I, I really salute you for being able to take that step back and make your family your priority. Appreciate in the that. midst of the storm, yeah, yeah, yeah many yeah. of us can't can't do that. You know and I, I like to say a message to all my dudes from my era, rappers, producers, executives. You know, a lot of us got some nice stories, and they should be heard. And you know, these are the type of shows and these type of gentlemen that welcome that. <clears throat> so don't think like I did and think that we're irrelevant or nobody wants to hear us because they do. We just got to recognize our value. And once we recognize our value, these stories and these, our contributions become priceless. And mm -hmm. we need to take advantage of that. Bag few. Like, subscribe. Super thanks. Follow us. The subscribers is going up. We about to hit 54,000. We did 10 million views in one year. Let's get to 100 million views in 2024. We out of here. Mm-hmm.